Arrakis is this unrelenting anvil against which people are beaten and shaped and forged into something that's stronger. There's something very spiritual about that sand, which on the surface is really nothing, but underneath has a really diverse biological backstory. One of my favorite lines from Frank Herbert is, when you end a novel, it's like a train coming into the station that doesn't stop. You just jam on the brakes and let the sparks fly into people's imagination. Arrakis is a test, is what the Fremen say. And the player comes right into the heart of that test. Dune Awakenings of a survival game at the base level. And it begins like a traditional survival game, you know, like you're looking for water, you're looking for shelter. You know, where will you find water in the desert? Will you, will you take it? from others. So when we talk about survival, sure, we start with the basic kind of survival, survive. And then when you've survived long enough, it's now time to think about political survival and how you progress within the universe. The approach we take when building a world like Arrakis is, is we kind of have to think about where are the stark lines and how do we draw these epic spaces? How do we make them feel huge? and the player feels dwarfed by everything they see around them. The intention was every time we saw the desert, it was highly brutal, and if you went out into the desert without the right protection and without the right knowledge, that it was sure death. If we looked at references from some of the hottest deserts in the world, the visuals that we saw from those deserts weren't enough. We needed this world to be even harsher. So we've been working with Legendary since the very beginning. They've been very generous with sharing with us assets from the film and allowing us to see things from the film and allowing us to really understand the, the vision that Denis Villeneuve has for the, the world and his characters and the way he's grounding Arrakis. But of course, a game is a much larger scale, so we need to expand upon that vision. We have our own army of concept artists who are sending things back and forth with Legendary all the time. One of my best moments on this project so far actually was I got to go and visit the set of the first film with a group of the people from Funcom, the art directors, the lead artists, and we got to walk around in the actual sets that they had built in classic old school set building, massive palaces and we got to look at the ornithopters from the inside and the outside, right? We got to walk around them and get a sense of their scale. Well, I think what they had done really well is they'd been quite inspired by the world that we had built in June part one. You know, on a film, you're sort of led on a journey by the director and by the script, whereas in a game, you have the opportunity to sort of create your own narrative and create your own journey. The most exciting aspect for me is the fact that you can take what you've enjoyed and loved and you can build your own stories and your own places. And that to me is the ultimate goal, is to have you know, complete control. Using Unreal 5 to create a game is obviously one of the better choices. Unreal 5 gives us flexibility through the blueprinting system. It allows us to handle amazing graphics through the rendering system, the lighting system, such as Lumen. Lumen technology allows proper light bouncing. If I had to say one thing in the game that really benefits from Lumen, it's player-crafted spaces. In our case, it's like you build a room and you place a window and the window lets in natural light and the light will fill the room in a way that feels real. And that technology hasn't existed before. Before Unreal 5, in the olden days, you had to use what we called the LOD system. And that meant that you had to create assets at different LOD levels, so it doesn't slow down everybody's computer. With Unreal 5, we have this new technology called Nanite that breaks things down into the right amount of polygons at the right distance. So for us, as a company, this has made an amazing difference to the visual detail of the world. It allows us to create one really amazing looking cliff piece, for example, and then doesn't matter how far away or how close we place it, it performs well and it looks great. Where Unreal worked for us on June was that it was a fantastic pre-production and planning tool. On June part two, we had some very complicated scenes and we were able to pre all the way from Budapest what the light was going to be doing well in advance. It's the only tool that I've used, I, I would say, in my 25 years of shooting that is able to be used across a wide spectrum of films by different types of filmmakers. The most iconic creature in the Dune universe is the sandworm of Arrakis. And so we've tried to represent this in the game in multiple ways. 
So as a player, your first steps on the open sand. You hear the hiss of the sand in the distance as a sandworm begins to move towards you. And when it gets close, you hear the roar as it erupts from the sand nearby. And at that point, you have only seconds to live if you cannot make it to rocky ground. So this is your first experience with sandworms. And these are the little ones. When you go into the deep desert, when you're harvesting spice, the giant ring mouth sandworms that we've seen in the film will erupt underneath the spice blowers and suck harvesters and equipment down into the sand beneath them. There's really only one rule. The sandworm will always come. Humans have always had this innate drive to create something, to build worlds, whether it's in their head, whether it's in text, whether it's on screens, whether it's in games. Funcom as a company has been on this journey for a long time, creating multiplayer worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. We were there in the beginning with massively multiplayer online games. We've been there in the beginning with survival open world crafting games. And Dune is a combination of those legacies, bringing us forward into the future. It's the culmination of what Funcom means as a company and what we can deliver. And this legacy means that we need to really pay attention to what we're creating and how we create it for the fans. Because I think at the heart of this, there's a lot of people out there who really want to live in the universe that Frank Herbert created. And they really want to live in the visual world of the films that they see from Villeneuve. And so we need to create the gap between those two possibility spaces and create a game world where people can live out their fantasies that they've taken from Dune. And yes, it's a huge legacy and it feels at times extremely overwhelming, but we really hope that we can deliver something for everybody.